Assalamu alaikum. In this video, I will try to have a small discussion about the Islamic perspective of what we should do in the crisis of coronavirus. Islam is not just a belief system or state of mind or even a blind faith. Islam is fact whether we believe or not. What happened before our existence? Where did we came from and where are we leading to? What's going to happen after we die? How to be better in this world and the hereafter? Islam defines all of these questions. Islam is not just confined to mere ritualistic practices and recitations. Actually, the scope of Islam is much wider than what most of us think. It is actually a way of life based on some principles. The principles are guided by a set of rules by which we should govern our lives. For example, the coronavirus was not prevailing in ancient Arabia. But Islam teaches us few principles or guidelines by which we can protect ourselves by dealing with this crisis of coronavirus. Scientists, doctors, all are talking a lot about quarantine. What is this quarantine? This actually means that people should not be in contact with one another as much as possible. This particular concept is integrated in the Sharia of Islam since a long period of time as taught by our beloved Prophet Muhammad According to Islam, we cannot go to an infected area. We can't even come out of such an area. Even though if anyone visits to such an area for some work or something and gets stuck over there, he or she shouldn't get out of that place. He or she even shouldn't return back home if his or her own place of residence become infected. We should try to apply this principle to a reasonable extent to the best of our ability as we all know that there are various other factors involved like cost, visa period, etc. etc. In this hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari, Muhammad sallallahu said that disease is not contagious. This is a very controversial hadith which is mostly used by non-Muslims to show that Islam believes in unscientific fact that disease can be contagious. Actually, in this hadith, our Prophet sallallahu meant that no disease or virus can transfer without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why we must first seek Allah's help and protection. Along with that, we must be careful and should do our level best to prevent an infection from getting spread as much as possible. You will understand this by looking at the last part of this hadith where it is mentioned to run away from a person affected by leprosy as if you run away from a lion. Why? Since this is a highly contagious bacterial infection which is transferable, that is the reason why Muhammad taught us to stay away from this kind of a person so that the infection cannot spread further. To understand this issue, we have to read the whole hadith, not partially. You will understand the concept of quarantine following this particular Sahih Hadith of Bukhari where Muhammad sallallahu said that when you get the news of plague which is a highly contagious disease spreading in any area you should not go to that area and if you are in that place already stay there and do not come out of that place. As I said before Islam provides us principles which gives us a guideline. If we are told not to leave an infected land or city, we can even apply this principle to our houses or even our rooms. If anyone finds any symptoms of infection, he or she should try to stay inside the house or even stay inside a room as much as possible so that the virus cannot spread further. As the goal of this quarantine was to facilitate not to spread this disease. Coronavirus can be a punishment for some people and a mercy for the others. Aisha radiallahu anhu said, the Prophet said about plague that this is a kind of punishment. 
Allah sends this upon whom he wills, but it is also a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the believers. After that, it is mentioned what we should do in these kind of situations. This hadith mentions that if a person does not leave plague affected area with patience and expecting the reward from Allah, he should stay there believing that whatever harm that might happen to him will happen with the permission and decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah might honor him with the status of martyr. This means that he should try his level best to stay safe but he should also believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rely on him being patient and should not leave that infected area. The dignity of martyr is not a play. If anyone dies on a fight for the favor of Islam, he is granted paradise without any reckoning. Allah the Almighty has declared such a reward for a person who will fight this disease being patient enough not to leave such an infected area. Everything in this universe happens with the permission of God. Therefore, we must pray and patiently seek for His forgiveness and help in this kind of situations. Now, let us see a few guidelines that the World Health Organization has mentioned in their website. We should wash our hands repeatedly as much as possible, at least for 20 seconds. We should try to maintain social distancing as far away as possible. We should keep at least 3 feet of distance among each other to prevent the disease from spreading as much as possible, as this disease easily spread through cough and sneeze. We should not frequently touch our eyes, nose and mouth because the virus can easily enter our body in this manner. We should try to maintain the respiratory hygiene keeping our nostrils and throats cleaner. If anyone has fever or cough, he or she should try the level best to stay in the house as much as possible. Everyone is saying the same thing, stay home, stay home. We have to stay inside our houses more and more so that the virus cannot spread. If the virus cannot spread too much, it will definitely save some lives. Also, it will also keep some vacancies in the hospitals in order to treat critical patients. You will find many of such guidelines online. So, try to follow them and protect yourself and your families. Please note that Islam teaches us to be careful and take all precautions along with that we should also place our tawakkul or belief on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our safety and well-being. Thank you. Hope you like this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Thanks.